as we go on demonstrating different things in the glass shop and like that, you guys are going to get tired of looking at one person. We have about 30 people that work here in the studio, and uh, as we go through the series, we're going to introduce you to different ones. And the first person we want to introduce you to is Kirsty, and she's going to be doing our uh, what we call the seven deadly shapes for us, along with some other things. So, uh, Kirsty. Hi. Say hi. <laughs> I'm Kirsty. Um, I'm 23, and I've been with Glass by James Michael for approximately five years. Um, you so you're not really a beginner anymore. No, not not quite. Do you re <laughs> do you remember uh, what it was like when you first started? What what was the biggest obstacle? Um, the hardest thing. I would say three of the biggest things for me was even consistency with my spinning, even airflow and heat acclimation. Ah. The translation of that is, the two things I say most <laughs> often in the studio with beginners is keep turning the pipe and more heat. Uh, <laughs> the, the tendency is to not let things heat up enough and then to pull them out before they're really hot enough to work with. And then you get them back to the bench and you screw around and it just gets colder and then you gotta reheat it again and like that. So in the beginning, a lot of times, you might do four or five or more reheats to do a piece that really you know, shouldn't take maybe one. But Too much heat is a bad thing because it, it can, can be. all fall on the floor if you don't keep a rotation. It's true. <laughs> so what was the first time, do you remember the first time you gathered what that was like? The first time I gathered was a very hard thing. I gathered way too deep, and then I had to try to roll all the all of that glass onto the end of my pipe, and that was very hard because I was a beginner. What did you think <laughs> about the heat? The heat was hard. Um, it was very hot and in your face, it made your face burn. But but you keep coming back. I do. Okay. What can I say? <laughs> <laughs> So I guess maybe uh, what we're trying to get at here a little bit is that in the beginning it's not easy, okay? Uh, even after 25 years sometimes it's still not easy. Uh, the heat doesn't get any less hot, the pipes don't get any less heavy. Uh, we don't magically, as we gain more experience, uh, do things um, where you know it's easier for us. It's easier because we practice, it looks easier because we know what we're doing and we keep doing it. Uh, it's like anything else. If you do it well, uh, somebody from the outside, uh, it doesn't look that tough. And uh, if you've watched other people and you decided you want to learn how to blow glass, uh, be aware that it's uh, not going to be making beautiful things the first day. Uh, it takes some time. It takes a lot of practice. A lot yeah. of practice, a lot of time, and a lot of efforts. In our studio, we teach a system we call the Seven Deadly Shapes. It's real simple, seven shapes that if you can master them, you'll be able to make just about anything you want with a pipe and a pontiel. So it's the seven deadly shapes. We're gonna go through them one by one. Uh, they all start the same. We're all gonna start with a gather, marver, bubble, jack line. That's gonna be the exact same for every one of these. The difference is gonna be how we treat that bubble between then and when we knock it off. So over the next few lessons, we're going to go over that. The first shape is very simple. It's a cylinder. Straight sides, taller than it is wide. Simple cylinder, shape number one. Okay, so first I'm going to get my first gather. Yeah. It's always important to make sure that gather has made a complete rotation in the glass so that it's nice and smooth. And if you look at that one, that one's pretty good. Yeah. Nice clean line all the way around, no big V shapes. And then I like to shape it down to get it a little more round, just to start off with a good shape. I like the way you're using you know, the heel of your hand there, and you can see how that V's out really quickly. And pushes and all the glass off of the mm -hmm. pipe there. The more glass you put off the pipe, the more you have to work with for your shape. Then you put in your first bubble. A couple different schools on that. Some people uh, like to puff in and cap the pipe, and some people like to blow it out with their breath. In our studio, most of us uh, don't cap. Most of us uh, use our lungs to pull that out, and it gives you the advantage of being able to feel how much air you're moving, and that gives you an idea how big your bubble's getting.
jack line is important. And I think it was important that, you know, when you put that jack line in, it was nice to see that you uh, didn't use both sides of the jack right away. You got that circle. Right. You don't want to ever put too much pressure on your jack line because you'll end up squeezing your piece in and cutting off your, your intended jack line. Yeah. You can cut and off the bubble, path. too. Yeah. <laughs> definitely, the, yeah, definitely the bubble. That jack line, you can see it there, it's nice. And that, cooling that spot with the jacks, you know, that's why moving them up and down, you're always presenting a new cold part of the metal to the jack, to the glass, and that uh, allows it to freeze, and that freeze allows it to snap, act like a solid, right? And there. gives you a nice good breaking point, especially if you mm -hmm. hit the water all the way around nice and clean. Yeah. The water uh, is used to uh, just stress the glass and let it start to, to crack uh, there where it's cold. Uh, it's not really necessary. Uh, a lot of folks in our shop use that, especially when they're beginning and their stuff's pretty thick. Uh, after a while, you get to the point where you don't really need the water or different ways of doing it. But that's a nice little little cylinder. Back to the marver there, just to straighten it all out. Mm -hmm. Make that lip a little more even with the rest of the piece. Mm -hmm. And then back in for a flash. You always want to flash a piece uh, if, if you've tooled it at all, uh, touched it up with any tools or anything before you put it in the oven. It just helps uh, homogenize the heat so that it's all the same throughout the piece. Gives you a little better chance of uh, having it manage to uh, make it through the annealing process. Especially if you have differences in thickness, it, it's even more important. Waiting for it to cool just a little bit before I knock it off so I get a nice break at the end of my honey. A little tap comes right off. That's the way they're supposed to work anyways. <laughs> we hope for it. Yeah. <laughs> It's one of those things that you practice and practice and practice and some days it all works good and some days you need to make adjustments. But that was the number one shape, the first one, the cylinder. And really that's where you work from, from there. Uh, lots of other things get made from that point.